Hi, you're on the Alice Reddit Stories channel. Subscribe to my channel as well as to my Facebook, the link is in the description. Enjoy watching. I'm the mother of three children, ages 24M, 36F and 38F. The 36-year-old still visits me sometimes and keeps in touch, but the other two cut contact with me. Up until last night, I had no idea why my eldest daughter had cut ties with me. We had a wonderful relationship, and she was always my favorite. My, now ex, husband and I paid for her university, helped plan her wedding, she called me every Mother's Day and visited fairly often, etc. My daughters were wanted and loved by both their parents. My son was an accident that had happened during an extremely inconvenient time in our lives and was a massive strain on us. Why my son cut ties with me was not a mystery. Let's be clear, I treated my son terribly his entire time living with me. He had an awful childhood where he was rejected by almost everyone in his life, including his family. I told him from, before he could understand words, that he was the reason that my life was miserable. When he grew up to school age and ended up friendless and bullied, I told him that there was a reason that no one liked him. I was completely dismissive of his feelings and would send him into his room for crying if I didn't feel like dealing with it and generally acted like I didn't care about him at all. I bullied him for his interests and his failures. My husband didn't want anything to do with him and only paid attention to him when I wasn't around to look after him and his sisters just weren't around for most of his childhood because they're 12 and 14 years older than him. Unsurprisingly, he grew up to be a sullen, quiet, and antisocial teenager who spent the bulk of his time in his room and didn't really speak to anyone in the family unless he was spoken to or felt the need to lash out. He graduated a year early, left home at 17, and cut contact with me, my husband, and my daughters. I reported him missing to the police, but nothing came of it. For years, I had no idea where he went. Five years later, he showed up at my doorstep. He was dressed decently well, but otherwise seemed like a complete mess, he was gaunt and looked like he hadn't slept in a week. He told me that he wanted me to know that he'd made it. When he left home at 17, it was because he'd gotten a full scholarship to a university in the next state over. He'd gotten a bachelor's degree and had been accepted into a doctorate program in renewable energy. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the mood to hear him out. I was going through my divorce at the time, and I snapped at him for cutting contact and making me wonder if he was dead for five years. The stress of wondering if he had anywhere to go or if we'd essentially killed him was a part of what ended our marriage. I'd meant it in a loving I actually did care type of way, but that wasn't how he saw it. I tried to stop him, but he left before I was even finished. Within months of that, my eldest daughter started having other plans around the holidays and gradually tapered off communication with me. I didn't know what had happened until I got a phone call last night. It was my eldest. She and her brother are ready to reconnect with me. Apparently, about two weeks after I'd shut the door on him, my son had tracked down his sister and given her a call. He was really struggling with depression at the time and didn't have a lot of people to reach out to. My eldest was just glad to hear that he was alive and invited him over. Since then, it was like she became his first real parental figure. He was visiting almost every weekend for a while, and even though he doesn't visit as often anymore, they're still very close. And he's doing okay now. It took a lot of time and therapy, but he developed the emotional maturity he was missing, and now he has plenty of friends and has even had a few girlfriends. By the sound of it, he's thriving. For a long time, my eldest didn't feel like it would be right to have a relationship with me while she was helping my victim to heal as she put it. But after she had a child herself, she wanted to bring me back into her life, so long as I can get along with her brother. She also said that she would kick me out if I showed the slightest amount of mistreatment towards her brother or her one-year-old daughter. We made arrangements for me to come visit them next Saturday and see how it goes. I'm so glad to hear that my son is okay. I was worried that he might have ended up an addict or killed himself. I also don't have the slightest clue what to say to him. I obviously owe him an immense apology. I don't even know if he wants to see me or if he's doing this for his sister. For a long time I thought my son was beyond saving, but it seems like he's done so much in spite of everything. 
I didn't realize how strong he was, and I want a relationship with him, my eldest, and her family. August 29th, when I made this post to a awesome mom group who's very understanding and most said I should leave my husband or get marriage counseling. I'm at the end of my rope right now. I don't know what to do, I'm normally very calm and collective and don't have outbursts. Don't forget to support my channel by subscribing, thank you. Here I am sitting in my room crying after scream slash yelling slash crying at my husband. For months I've been trying to help him get a new job and by help I mean I made his resume. I filled out the longest application online, I told him when to go into interviews. All he had to do was look nice and show up. For getting this new job, he was going to gift himself with his first paycheck, a pay of headphones. Well, he got the headphones because they were on sale, $350 is not a sale to me, and nothing ever came from either of the two jobs I had lined up for him. We had an argument Thursday where I was crying at work about this. Today it picked right back up, according to him he never filled out an application to this place, yes he did because after that walk-in interview I put the laptop in front of his ass and made him do it. He denies any recollection of this and shuts up. I lose my shit, I have gone above and beyond for him. I do everything, this house would crumble if it wasn't for me. Finally, I confess that I'm so overwhelmed that I've almost driven myself to the hospital to admit myself because I can't take this anymore. And I can't do that because what the fuck would I come home to? He can't shop for food without buying shit we don't need, he doesn't know when to pick up and drop off our daughter at school. If our dog needs anything, he doesn't even know how old he is. He can't even keep up with his own doctor appointments for meds that he needs, one single fucking pill, he can't remember to call his primary to do that. While I handle the kids, myself, my dog, and my foster animals. Yes, I suck at the dishes and laundry, but I have a shit back, but I also make dinner every night basically two meals one for kids one for adults. Make his work lunches and mine, bathe the kids, take care of the foster kitten's pen, food, litter, picking up supplies, and any vetting. I'm so overwhelmed, I cannot take it anymore. I'm going to snap, but I can't. I'm not allowed to. Is it sad I'm even upset I asked my mom for help with laundry since he rather sit and watch YouTube videos all day than try and do something and she said no to helping. He legit asked me to call off work to help put away laundry. We don't have that luxury to do that and honestly, I want to get the hell away from him. Loudly crying face I want to run away but that will solve nothing. We talk things are getting somewhat better, I know Rome wasn't built in a day. I know I have issues as well, which were brought up to me by my BFF, which I 100% agree I do. He took the job I wanted him to and is starting orientation tomorrow morning, I'm very happy with this because he will be working 10 minutes away, making $23 not $17, doesn't include shift differential, get a 3k bonus after 6 months and insurance from day 1. Unfortunately everything else is still pretty shitty, he had to get a physical for the new job and his BP was super high which we know, and he's supposed to be on meds for, but doesn't ever follow up on. So while I was at MY appointment I made his for him, but told him I am not his mother and I will not be doing this again for him and he needs to get his shit together. Two weekends ago on the outside everything was great, but not for me, for me, it was a shit show. And it shows how we aren't really moving forward at all or I'm not giving it enough time. I'll try and make it easy and short. Family was coming in from out of state, Friday night to Sunday, to celebrate older niece and nephew birthday. I work overnights Thursday to Friday am off Friday day then Saturday, Sunday, Monday night. Shift is 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. Thursday night I work, go to the store on my way home for cookies and things we might need at home. Take daughter to school, then come home and clean the four foster kittens pens, feed, and leader boxes. My husband deals with our two-year-old during all of this, but he gets up later. Since it's my day off I maybe nap, I don't remember, if I did it was with my son on the couch. So Friday is our normal day nothing wrong, but we have to get up and go to my parents' house around 12-ish. Turns out I get everyone ready before he's ready, which happens a lot. Let me also preface by saying I'm on diet meds so my meals are also important and I'm not always hungry and I don't eat like everyone else since I work overnights. So we had a family lunch for the twins and we stayed till 6-ish and drove home, I made dinner there so I wouldn't have to worry about it when I got home. I get home and go try and nap, 
which it's also around the kids' bedtime as well. I wasn't hungry at all and took my dinner meds and went to bed and planned to eat at work like I always do. So I'm laying in bed and it's loud AF, we also have this rule with our 5 year old if I say she can lay with me she can. But if I say no, then no she can't, because sometimes she gets lonely or scared when we are putting her 2 year old brother to bed. But I knew tonight was not a good night for it, she followed him in when he went to the bathroom and popped in bed with me. Don't forget to support my channel by subscribing, thank you. The entire time he was walking in the room, in the bathroom and out of the room, I was telling our daughter out, over and over. So I got shit sleep, in that time between that day and the day before I got, maybe 4 hours of sleep tops. Then Sunday breakfast at my parents' house. At 9 we are to be there, I get out at 7.30ish, but I rush out sooner. I asked my husband to please do the kittens and kids as much as he can before I get home. Part of our working on us is me asking for help, which is very hard for me to do, even more so letting someone do it. He texted me he's too tired to get up and he hasn't slept. My jaw about dropped, is he seriously fucking telling me this? Alright, so now I'm already in a funk, great, this is when I rage do everything myself. We get there close to 11, since I'm doing everything alone, and he's watching YouTube videos entertaining the kids. We had a great time again with family, but have to leave at a normal time, like 3-ish. I don't normally drink coffee but I made myself my very bad but delicious coffee when I was there and then one for work later because I knew I was going to need it. Prior to going to my parents' house in the text I sent asking for help I also told him that I don't care what's for dinner just make whatever and wake me up, I'll eat fast, hang with them for a little and then go back to napping. It is 100% all in text and I also repeated it to him at some point that day. So I napped and woke up at 8pm, confused as shit, I texted him asking what happened to waking me up for dinner. He said he thought I wanted to sleep, I told him yes, but I also wanted to be woken up for dinner, and mentioned the text. So I was pissed and went back to napping, because what else was I going to do? I go to work and wasn't hungry again, because my meals are all fucked up again, but at least I'm drinking all my water I need to. Monday comes, yet again I work that night. Monday is a holiday and my daughter has off of school and we have a foster kitten who's pregnant and need to be seen ASAP. They open bright and early and only do walk-ins, so I drive my daughter with me after I get out of work and go to this vet's office. We are there till 1 p.m., turns out our pregnant foster kitten isn't pregnant she's full of shit. Okay, now time to go home and nap and all that. Something happened where again I didn't eat dinner, it's been a week and we had another family weekend and I'm trying not to get them confused. Either way from Sunday morning to Tuesday night I didn't eat anything because of my husband not waking me up when he should have and was asked to. How do you allow your spouse to not eat for days? He could have woken me up to double check any of those times and asked if I was sure. I would never let him not eat for days, even if I'm pissed at him I'd still make him food. I apologize, this was so long, this is a lot to take in, this has really just hit the fan in the last 6 months or so. So what made me post this is this. I was running around and turns out we needed milk, but I refused to drive super far out of the way to Walmart since I'd been busy. So I went closest to Walgreens and unfortunately paid almost $6 for a gallon of milk for our son's bottles. So today while he was picking up our daughter from school, he was going to go to Walmart and the bank and then home. I assumed he was going to pick up more milk because we will need it and one less trip. He bought junk at Walmart and blamed my daughter. She didn't need a squish toy, a $5 mini Elsa, and a book while he got special pens. I asked if he got milk, no didn't even think of it, he only thought of himself. I don't want to leave, but I don't know how to make this better, I know it can't all be on me, but his answer to everything is tell me what to do and I'll do it. Thank you for watching, subscribe to my channel. There are many interesting articles ahead.